So now we are trying to find a relationship that exists between unit weight, void ratio, saturation, and then specific gravity. So again, we are starting from all the time we begin from here, make assumptions or try to break them further and then do substitution. We've seen this in earlier slides. And then until we arrive at this, and finally we can express this using the earlier table, earlier three-phase diagram. And then, so it's more or less about substituting one parameter you have been able to establish, giving a particular assumption to arrive at another. And again, I will entreat you. So note, unit weight for dry, fully saturated, and submerged cases can be derived from the upper equation. So where you have a sample totally dried, you will know what to do. Where it is fully saturated, you will know that when it is fully saturated, it means air is not present. So that will mean void ratio will be what? That's something to find out. And so at the end of the day, your expression becomes simplified. And submerged is where you have, you know that usually when you have a sample, so let's say, for example, I have two buckets, either of them filled with samples, and I take them, in, I dip one into water. As soon as I submerge it into water, it becomes quite lighter in my hand to handle. So those of us who have drawn water from a well before, you realize that when you throw the container you are using to fetch the water and it is being submerged. When you drag it, it's always lighter, but until it comes out of the water, it becomes heavier. So whilst in the water, there is some kind of upward force within the water that is forcing or pushing the sample out of the water. And so because of that support, it's kind of does not give you a reflection to know the exact weight of your sample. And so we can do a computation to know the submerged weight of a soil sample and its actual weight when it is dry and all of that. So then if I know, so if you are giving these three guys and you are supposed to compute for that, you can have your phase diagram in this format and then you resolve them. So this chart here is a chart that contains almost all formulas regarding the forms, the various forms of relationship that exist between saturated unit weight, dry unit weight, and then bulk unit weight or moist unit weight or wet unit weight or total unit weight. So you are able to find which one, depending on which parameters you are given. So when you are given water content, GS specific gravity, and then your void ratio, you can go and play around this one. If you don't want to go using the three phase diagram to worry yourself, you can go ahead and make use of this formula. So all of these are formulas and relationship that exist depending on what is available to you to compute for the others. So let's see, solution of phase problems. So now method one, you have to note these relationships. So return to the basics. We are trying method two. We want to return to basics where you have to make some assumption of some volume of solid to be one or total volume to be one or weight of solid to be one, depending on what is given to you. Remember this when you are giving a question. This is either you memorize some basic relationship as these four guys, or you use the basics, trying to use the phase diagram to resolve your situation. So method two, when you are giving void ratio, you assume Vs to be one. And this is the phase diagram you are going to arrive at. We've seen it. 
when you are giving water content, this is what you can do. And at the end of the day, we've seen this expression too. So now we are giving a question that the moist unit weight, and remember I said moist unit weight simply means wet unit weight, total unit weight, bulk unit weight. All of these things mean the same thing. And so you have your moist unit weight, which is gamma of a soil sample being this value. And then now your specific gravity is 2.69 and then your water content is given to you. So once you know all of these parameters, you are being asked to find out or compute for dry units with void ratio, porosity and degree of saturation. So now if you can memorize those formulas, fine, fair enough. So all you need to do, so remember this chart. It says that when you are giving water content and unit weight, go for this formula. So you see it's there staring at your face in this question. So you make the dry unit weight the subject of the equation and you have been given water content. So you just punch into the value, uh, into the formulas and then your calculator will give you this as your answer. So now, the dry unit weight, which is dry unit weight of an expression, you know that, and you know this formula. So again, you go back to this chart. Watch carefully the formula. GS over. So where you know your dry unit, you know dry unit weight given to you. Which formula are you going for? So if you know dry unit weight given to you, when you are giving dry unit weight, look at the set of formulas that you can deal with. Look at them. So you know GS, you know void ratio, saturated, and then the like. And then now dry unit weight session, you have dry unit weight. Look at the formulas that are available to you. So let's see which of them can we make use of. So look at this. You know the unit weight of water. So if I pick this, can I get the answer? Unit weight of water is a constant value. So it means if I pick this, I can easily get the answer from it. So you look at the formulas and the charts that are available to you and see if you can easily resolve that. So knowing your... Exactly. So this is what I was pointing at. So now you know your dry unit weight is equal to this expression and then you punch you substitute them with the values given to you make e the subject and you arrive at your answer then the expression goes on again you know this expression you've seen it where you have this expression how do you get your porosity you know that and then finally you know this relationship se is equal to wgs that is what is being made being used here to compute for your degree of saturation. And again, you have your answer. Then now, method B, where you want to play with that long process, phase diagram thing. So now you know your value, which is your water content was given to you. So you can stay knowing your water content and you know that weight of water is equal to weight of solid, which is the same as saturated or saturation times unit weight all over GS and water, unit weight of water. So now you know this guy and that guy can cancel out. And so you have your, and you know this is, weight of water content. So water content is equal to SE over GS. So you know this, it has been given to you as 9.8%. And so it becomes 0 0.098. Mm -hmm. It's equal to SE over, and you know your specific gravity was given to you as 2.69. So when you punch in the values, you have the Saturation times your E to be equal to 0 
three steps. Good, which is the same as that. Then now you want to go further and compute for your unit weight of the sample. So unit weight, again, you know unit weight to be equal to this formula, which is weight of water plus the weight of solid all over the total volume. And you know this guy, you know this, you have computed for that, you know this already. And so knowing all of these parameters, the only thing you don't know now in this formula is this. But then this guy is also given to you. So looking at this expression, the only thing that you'll be looking for is E. And so using this expression to punch in all of the values you know, you know GS is given to you as this, the unit weight of water, which is a constant 9.81 kN per meter cube. You know SE, you computed it from here. You know the unit weight of water once again, all over, this one is a constant where you are giving one parameter, the phase diagram will change where your total volume becomes what, which is this V here, becomes one plus E, you know this. And so you can easily make E the subject of the equation and you arrive at that. Then now you want to compute for your dry unit weight. You know the weight of, the formula is weight of solids over volume. And this expression can further be written in this form. When it is in this form, you know this. You know weight of what unit weight of water. You have computed for E. And so substituting them into the formula and punching using the calculator, you arrive at that. Then now porosity is the volume of voids over the volume, the total volume of the sample. And this E can also be written in another form. We know N is equal to E over one plus E, we know this expression. And so knowing this expression, all you need is punching your E you computed for earlier on from here. And then you arrive at this answer. So remember, this is supposed to be in percentage. So you have 33.8%. Then now that you know E, you can easily compute for saturation, degree of saturation. So degree of saturation is a matter of making that's the subject. You know your E, isn't it? So, and that is gotten. So you know S E is equal to W G S. So now you know this, you know that, you know this. So all you need to do is just make this the subject of the equation and you have this expression. So try them on your own. And then this one is trying to use the phase diagram, making an assumption that this is 1K Newton. And so I'll leave this to you as a trial work where you would use to compute because maybe in your quiz coming up, you may have that. Then we have the next question given to you here, which is fill density testing. Mm -hmm. has shown bulk density of a compacted soil base and whatnot. All of the parameters are provided. So you make your usual expression, SE is equal to WGS. And so punching in all of those values, and then you arrive at your E, which is what they are looking for. 